Hey there, crew members, Selvins here. So after my last video, I realized that since I covered the blockade of the Swiss Canal, I might as well cover... this. No, this is not a drawing that I made on paint to create a clickbait. This is the log tract of the Ever Given, right before it made its entrance in the Suez Canal and later on caused the blockade. It sure has a very interesting shape. It looks like a spiritual pattern from Zen Gardening. Yeah, okay, it looks like a d when that picture first appeared in the media, the general public had various reactions to it. Some thought that the crew of the Ever Given had a very twisted sense of humor, while conspiracy theorists claimed that a secret agency hacked the ship's control in order to cause the blockade and cripple the economy. And some even claimed that the ship was operated by Hillary Clinton and carried a cargo of child slaves. What? Well, in this video, we will debunk all that nonsense and analyze what could have caused the ship to create such an interesting pattern. Without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's start with a bit of context. The Ever Given was coming from the Red Sea and was waiting at the Suez Gulf for their pilots. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video where I fully explained what a pilot is, I highly recommend you do so. But essentially, they needed two pilots on board to cross the canal. Whenever a company wants a pilot, they have to submit their request days in advance. But in some busy places where the demand is high, the pilot office might ask you to wait until a pilot is available. The ship must then go to the designated area and goes in what we call a standby. In my career, I only took pilots on board in area with low traffic, so we didn't really have to wait our turn. Once we got near the sector, they simply asked us to keep a low speed to allow the pilot ship to come alongside. Then the pilot would come on board via a wooden ladder on the side. Now, in the case of the Suez Canal, it has a crazy amount of traffic, one of the busiest in the world. Just look at all these ships, it's insane! I think the most ship I came across during a single watch was about 10. And it was considered a busy watch. But there, there's over 50 ships regrouped in that narrow gulf. If I ever had to sell there, I think I would have freaked out the first time. All that to say, you can bet there's quite a high demand for pilots. Which includes a standby time for every ship, until a pilot is available for them. Anyways, the Ever Given arrived at their waiting position around 1 o'clock UTC, and got their pilot around 3.50 UTC. So about 3 hours of waiting. Now, as you can see on that picture, there are plenty of ships anchored. But the Ever Given decided not to drop the anchor. Instead, they kept their engines on and stayed adrift. Now, why did they choose to do so? Well, simply because if your ship is at anchor and you have to sail again, raising the anchor and starting the engines on can potentially delay the departure by an hour. And like I mentioned in my previous video, the pilot fees are quite expensive. In fact, they are in proportion by the tonnage of the ship. Meaning, the bigger your ship is, the more expensive it gets. Actually, let's calculate it together. Okay, so I'm using the Suez Toll Calculator. First, they're gonna ask about the vessel type. In that case, that was a cargo ship. Next, they are gonna ask for the draft, which is the vertical distance between the waterline and the bottom of the hull. After that, they will ask for the net tonnage, which is the total volume of the cargo carrying capacity, or, or how much cargo you can carry. And then there's the gross tonnage, uh, which is the volume of all the capacities of the ships, so uh, more focused on the general structure. So check this out, $760 for a regular pilot, and 1,800 for extra pilotage. That's a total of $2,560, and I think that's for every hour they have them on board. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. But in any case, they probably kept their engines running in order to save time and therefore money. Just as a side note, the whole passage fees would have been over $420,000. That's insane. Now, I would like to address the conspiracy theory. Well, the most popular one, let's say. That the Ever Given got hacked and that someone took control of the ship to draw a... Um, to leave his signature before blocking the canal. We got a problem. What? Someone synced a rat to one of my servers, a remote access tool. We're being hacked. Those ships are another pilot most of the time. The computers do the work. I am suggesting that the ship's computer were hacked. My suspicions lean toward the white hats. This was part of the plan. Alright, let me debunk that theory. 
point by point. So it's true that we use the autopilot, it's a very handy tool. But to say that we use it most of the time is a bit misleading. We use the autopilot during long transits on open water, when the ship has to steer a set course for a long time without alteration. However, when we sail in a dense traffic zone or near the coast, the watchkeeping regulations requires us to have the ship steered by the helmsman instead of the autopilot, simply because the autopilot is not quick enough to respond when you suddenly have to alter your course, and therefore does not have the capability to do multiple maneuvers in a very short period of time. And what better example than the entrance of the Suez Canal? I mean, just look how busy it is. The place is packed with ships going in every direction. Using the autopilot there would be extremely dangerous. But for the sake of it, let's suppose that they were still on autopilot at the entrance of the canal. Even then, the autopilot is not connected to any wireless network. It's part of the inner ship system, directly connected to the steering gear. It doesn't broadcast anything, it doesn't have an IP address. Look, the point is, you can't just hack and take control of the autopilot from your computer. We got two of the blinky boxes left to go. Ooh, blinky boxes. Just hack, hack. But again, just for fun, let's say they were able to take control of the autopilot. Well, even then, the autopilot controls the rudder, not the engines. The propulsion system is a completely separated system, monitored by an entire team of engineers. So they would have taken control of the ship setting, but not the propulsion. Therefore, they're not gonna go anywhere. So moral of the story, you can't hack a ship and then steer it remotely. That would be the same as saying that someone could hack your car and then control it. Oh wait, they can? Okay, just forget that comparison. Alright then, let's look at what really happened. Like I previously mentioned, the Ever Given had to wait 3 hours before their pilots came on board. In other words, they had to keep a stationary position. Now, personally, I've mostly worked on class 1200 icebreakers. Those type of ships have two propellers. Excellent for doing sharp turns or to stay stationary, because one propeller can go forward, while another one can go backward, which creates what we call in physics a moment. It makes the ship pivot on itself. So again, a fantastic conception to do maneuvers. But now, if we look at the Ever Given, they only had a single propeller. On the plus side, it does make it a bit more effective on the speed and the fuel consumption. But like I mentioned previously, not ideal for maneuvering. And just by looking at her dimensions, I can tell it must take a tremendous amount of energy to move her in a specific direction. As a demonstration, let's say that a big ship is trying to stay on a specific spot. With two propellers, it can do multiple maneuvers to stay around. But with only one propeller, it would have to do fewer and more direct maneuvers. Which would make it look like the ship is gravitating around. Okay, now let's analyze the simulation by Vessel Finder. Let's begin. Okay, it's not drifting too fast. Okay, that tells me the center of their perimeter was probably around this point. That has to be the rendezvous point with the pilot ship. Meaning, if they ever drift too far, that's where they would have to come back to. Right there, I got a strong feeling that the wind is coming from the southwest. Because the profile of the ship is perpendicular to the direction it's drifting. So now they're going back to their rendezvous point. Huh. But see, now they're drifting away from the center because their massive ship kept its momentum. Once again, they have to come back. Okay, now see at this point they're doing something a bit weird. They're kind of doing circle motions back and forth, but I think the intent behind it was to give enough space to the Al Nasriya to pass while keeping a safe speed. And then they went back to their rendezvous point. Then we have the Masaheb 2 coming by. I checked online and as I thought, 
that was the pilot ship. So at this point, the ever given is to keep a steady speed for the transfer. And now they have their pilots on board. But there is something very impressive that I noticed earlier. See, right before it went to the Ever Given, it stopped at the Costco Galaxy to transfer yet another pilot. Why do I find this impressive? Because in my career, I've never seen any pilot ships carrying more than one pilot at a time. They would leave port, transfer the pilot to the ship, and then come back to port. But here, the Swiss pilot ships carry multiple pilots at a time, transferring them on different ships in a single run. That's how high the demand is. Impressive. Good. All right, and now the Ever Given is on its way to the canal. Here, they do a long turn to let the Anazaria pass first, probably because they had priority on the list. Like I said in my previous video, the traffic is being controlled by the Marine Communication and Traffic Service. They are the one deciding the orders. And there, it has done a very long turn to give sufficient time to the Al Nazria to go ahead. That way, they wouldn't be too close to one another in the canal. They would have a safe distance. And finally, they're making their entrance, right before they run aground. So yeah guys, in the end that was just a coincidence, nothing more to it. You would be shocked and amazed by the weird drawings ship tracks can create when they're adrift. Mother Nature sure has a twisted sense of humor. Thank you for watching, if you liked this video make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for extra content. And if you have any suggestion for a future video, leave it in the comment section below. And as always, sail safe.